thank you very much for taking the time to summarize your EHA post presentation. Sure. Could you give us an overview of the most important results? Yeah, first of all, I, I was really happy to be able to present at the EHA, so it was really a great congress. And um, my poster presentation was uh, about a cohort of 35 patients from Sankt Anna Kind Hospital with hereditary spherocytosis. So spherocytosis is a genetic condition that affects uh, red blood cells and uh, they specifically cause hemolytic anemia, jaundice, which is like yellow skin, and splenomegaly. And there are five genes that are known to cause this disease so far. So there is SPTA1, SPTB, EPB42, um, ANC1, and um, SLC4A1. So the aim of this study was basically to compare the phenotype of the patients and the severity of their phenotypes to the genetic severity or pathogenicity of the variants. And to do that, we, do, we perform whole, uh, whole exome sequencing and targeted sequencing to a group of 35 index patients. The most important notes to take from this, um, from this poster or from this study are basically five. So the first one is that this is the single, uh, single center study which means that all the laboratory data and all the clinical data is collected at the same hospital. That's quite important because everything is homogenized and also because we have access to affected family members that could increase our cohort. Then also since, as I mentioned, it's a single center study, it's the first one in the Central Europe and that's actually not so, like, that's not so trivial because there, is, uh, there are other studies in, for example, Western Europe which are quite different from the genetic perspective on the results compared to ours. And this can be very well explained by the geographic position of Austria and Europe and the migra migration flows. Then, uh, genetically speaking, uh, the variants were very interesting. They were not only the common ones, but also like copy number variants, intronic variants that were actually genetically very challenging to find. So that was uh, one of the highlights. And um, well, the results of the comparison between the phenotypes and the genotypes of the patients were also confirming what is already known, that SLC4A1 patients have a milder phenotype than the others. Um, and last but not least, the, this study is also proving once again that um, NGS is actually quite a necessary tool for applying uh, all this knowledge into the clinics and to help diagnosing and treating patients. And what are the clinical implications? It seems prognostical. Um, yes, actually this can explain uh, or can help determining what's like the correlation between these variants and this severity and in the end the clinical severity of the patients. The treatment should be usually the same because the disease is the same but still it always gives you the answer of what is actually causing this disease to the patients and to the families. So. There was also a lot of discussion around your poster presentation at the EHA. Uh, why did your presentation generate so much interest? Well, um, Professor Kager is actually um, like a very famous person in this field so as you know like he's like head of hematology of the hospital but he's also well recognized in Europe and in, in the world so since uh, we collaborate from CCRI with Santana in this project uh, a lot of people who know him approached my poster and we were discussing about the specific topic of the poster and about future collaboration so actually this generated a lot of discussion and a lot of talks between collaborators. You have been attending other sessions and presentations um, what were your personal highlights? Well, there were, I mean, all the talks that I attended were actually great. And as I said before, the conference was uh, amazing. But if I have to select maybe two, I would choose the one from Akiko Shimamura, which was about the comparison or the overlap between bone marrow failures and primary immunodeficiencies. That was actually very interesting for our, for our specific group and our our knowledge and um, the second one, uh, the one from Pierre Emmanuel Gleise, who was describing new findings in the HIET R gene uh, in the context of diamond black fan anemia, which is also one of our main topics. Okay, what did he find out? He found out that this gene is actually a new gene causing this specific defect and in the context of the study that we are doing together with him and other groups in a like European consortium, it's actually a great finding to decipher what are the causes behind DBA that are yet unknown for us.